Hello, welcome to Spy Money. I'm going to show you how to open a chart from uh, scratch and how to adjust it to your settings. Now, uh, you go up to Tools, or I'm sorry, you go up to New and go to Chart, and then you're going to pick the chart you want. And we're going to choose ES. Now, all this we're going to come back to. Uh, I have mine set up on a different way. Um, I don't have my chart set up the way that we were doing. So now we're going to come in. I'm going to go ahead and delete my indicators and so forth off of here. And then I'm going to come into the chart and I'm going to right click it and I'm going to come into data series. Now what we're doing now is we're changing what happened. Now the reason mine come up like that is because that's the way I have my charts come up when I first um, uh, load them. And on yours it'll come up ever how you set it here so what you want to do is come back in and we're going to set up for a five minute and then we're going to do a, a 30 days i like 30 days back we're going to do a candlestick pattern uh, we're going to do the bar width um, really three is all you need and as far as the color for down bars i'm going to change these to fit what you all probably want uh, down uh, is red green is up and the auto scale, I keep that on there. That way the chart is always, you know, the candles and everything's always right. Uh, center price on scale, I kind of like that. And that keeps the price always right here. It's never up there. It's never down there. It's always in the center. It actually kind of helps. Uh, display in the data box, I don't do that. As this right here, it will actually show up right here. I don't like a lot of stuff on my chart. So I'm going to delete that. And then... The, let's see here, trading break. Um, this one is actually uh, pretty decent. Um, if you do um, a very light color to it, and that will give you a line up and down in between sessions. And then if you do end of day only, it's only gonna show one. So if you look way back, it won't have all those lines. And I'll show you that here in a minute. Uh, one is fine. I always leave the colors here the same. I never change them. Um, they're fine the way they are for me. But you can go in and you can change them and do whatever you want. And then we're going to apply. And then we're going to come back. Now our bar width is just a little bit too small. So let's go back in the data series. We're going to come back to bar width. And we're going to do like a, maybe we'll do an 8. Hit apply. 8 is better. Uh, if we do a, a 12... A little too much. So we do a 10. There we go. So now we're looking at the bars going across. Now our price is right here in the center. It's always there. Now let me show you another thing. If you come back and if you click on center price on uh, scale, you don't want to do that. Now your price goes all the way up through there. So let's leave it that way for now. And what that will do is allow more room for this big old uptrend that it had. And then when we uh, go backward, um, the way we scroll back and forth is you come down here to the uh, date and you just drag it. Drag it to where you want. So you can put that in there. Now if you notice right there is our end of day session. Now if we come back, um, it's only at the end of day is when it's actually putting that in there. And that's because we did the data series. We come back and we had um, right there. And we did end of day only. So if we do all sessions, um, actually it would be end of day and all sessions would be the same. If we turn it off, then those disappear. I like to know when the break is personally. Uh, but that's you know personal preference between people. So if you go ahead and leave that on, then you can see that, you know, from one day to the next what it did. You know, so when it closed here, you know that it just kind of rallied back up. So it's just easier for me to understand where we are. So the if you want to move up and down, let's say if you drag this one here on your date and you get it back to where you want, and then to go up and down, it won't move. But what you do is you come over here. And you hold your control button down and you can do this. Now, once you move this, you can do it over here too. 
Okay, so but you gotta have your control button down. When you let off, it stops. See, I'm, I let off the button, and I grab the button. Now, if you get this all out of whack, and it's just, you know, say over here, and it's up like that, you don't know how to get it back. You go up here to the F, it's fixed. When you click on that, it brings it right back. Okay, so the only thing you have to do, there's a little scroll bar down here if you wanna go a lot further. So you can scroll back and forth, and then you can uh, left click on your chart and drag back and forth. So those are the, the basic movements. So you've got um, dragging here, you gotta click and hold to drag it up and down, and then control button and then click, and you can move it anywhere you want, you can do anything you want with it. And then your time, you can stretch it out or, or stretch it back. And then you've got your scroll button that scrolls back and forth. So once you get everything set the way you want, then you click fixed, and then you're right there. So fixed to get you all back. So that's how you maneuver around the chart. Now we have um, different things up here across the top. You have your uh, chart style. So if you want to make it a box, you can or hollow sticks or whatever. Uh, candlesticks is what I use. And then you have your drawing tools. Shows you how to put everything on there and make it the way you want. So, and we go over that in another video. And then you have a plus sign here. So you can actually come in and let's say you wanted this area right here to be the chart. So you would click on that, come down, let off, and that zooms in. If you want to zoom out, you can click zoom out and it goes right back. Uh, Yours probably has, it looks like this without the crosshairs. I like the crosshairs because when I, if I'm right here, I can look back here to see where the support and resistance is. So if I'm, if I'm right there, I can look to the right and see that that is a very good resistance spot. You can see it went right, th right through it and then yeah, it pulled right back to it. So that is definitely a resistance spot, uh, support and resistance. Uh, then we have this one, show data box. That is the same thing. Let's see here. The data box, no, it's not the same thing. You know, I don't know what that does. Um, oh, that's the data for um, whatever is going on, like your bar that you're currently in. If you hit that data box, it'll show all the information in it. I never use it. I, don't, I just don't like things on my chart. Um, this one is your chart trader. You can look to the right. Uh, you'll see it disappeared over here. Now, if we click on it again, it will pop it back up. If you hit the chart trader and hidden, then it will hide the chart trader, and then it will show all of your transactions um, as far as like your your buy limit and all that. Uh, I don't use it that way. I use I like my chart trader out. And then you have your data series. That is the same thing as right clicking your chart and clicking data series to find all this information. So you can do it that way, or you can do data series. That is everything on the center of this chart, whatever's on the inside, not this, not that, or the bottom, it's all in here. Uh, this is your data series, uh, talking about all your candles and things like that. And then you can go to the next one. Uh, let's see here, strategies, properties. So if we go to that was data, here's your indicators. Uh, you can go in there and add stuff here. And I've got another video on that uh, where you, we go over all of this. And so it's just a quick way to get there. Then you have your strategies. Um, you can put in whatever strategy you want. Uh, this is the master trader that we've got in there. And this one has everything on it. Uh, if, you, if you're not familiar with um, our spy bot, then we have a course on that. If you have any questions on it, let me know. I'd be more than happy to help you. Uh, this one is our properties. This is regarding like the, uh, the background of the chart and things like that. You can put an image on the back if you wanted. So um, like on mine, I usually have uh, spy money on the back. Uh, don't right now. And let's see. And with that, you pick whatever file you want. Um, and you can stretch it, whatever you want to do. The color the chart background if you wanted I mean you could make it gray if you wanted so it looks like that um, I like black I just think it looks better I can see everything on it a lot better so that's just for me uh, crosshair labels 
um, you know, that is like all of these labels over here, you know, what they are, and your inactive price markers, um, which would be this one right there. Um, and it just goes on down through there. Your text, you know, how you want that, anything that shows up on the chart. I don't like it real bright. I like everything a little bit dimmer, so I go to the grays. Then your lines, you've got access there, uh, the crosshair, and your grid line. Uh, I hide those. Uh, you can put, uh, say you want the grid line in there, it'll show it. Um, and I just picked a color. I, I didn't. But I, I don't like them. I don't like anything on the chart other than the end of day session. We have um, uh, the vertical line, which would be up and down. Uh, panel splitter. Um, then we have uh, the window. Um, this is actually, I leave mine alone, but you can have it on top. So if this is the one you're trading, no matter what is up, you want this to be on top, then you would have that one checked. And down here at the bottom, there's some tabs. And you can check on that and take it off. I leave mine on. And the reason I leave mine on is because if I want to have, say, um, another chart here, then I could have NQ and have that there. So I could have ES there, NQ there, but still have one chart. So it just works out better. Um, so we're just going to talk about one right now. So that's how you get around the chart. That's how you um, get it started as far as starting one, uh, how to maneuver around it, how to change your candles. And like, you know, if you want to go to your uh, Unirenko, then you would come here and then you go ahead and click apply and then there's your Unirenko. So you know, if you're trading that, we have a SpyBot stepper that uses the Unirenko. And so this is more of a trend um, trend candle. It actually works really well because you can get in here and just kind of let it keep on going and just stay in the trade. And as long as it doesn't reverse out and show these little uh, purple lines, then you know, you're pretty good about staying in. But it just it makes it a lot easier to watch it. Where if we go back uh, to a one minute, see how it's just everywhere. The Unirenko just kind of keeps it in line. It just makes it easier to read it. Uh, it's very good if you're you know, into trend trade and you just want to know the trend. You don't care about all the noise. It works really well. So uh, that's how you do that. And now on this part, you can right click and do this. I don't ever touch anything in here. I leave it the way it is. Um, you're welcome to change that. A lot of people ask me, how do I change the colors of my chart trader? So what I do is I come over on the chart trader. I right click and I go to properties. And then when you go to properties, this is the colors of them. So I've got my reverse and close, midnight blue. I've got dark green for my buy, and I've got dark red for my sell. That's just the colors that I choose. I leave all these the same, uh, just the default. It doesn't really matter to me what they are. Um, I know what they are when they pop up. Stop loss is always you know, this one here, the red. So these you know, work good for me, the blue there. It's not a big deal. That's all I ever change in here. Um, one thing you can do is show gross realized uh, profit. So as you're trading during the day, this will show up the amount of money that you're in your trade. But when you close out the trade, if you click this, it will actually show the money that would be uh, in here. I don't use it because I can look up here at my account and do it that way. Um, let's see here. Uh, P&L display that is on here. Uh, you can choose what you want. I always leave it on currency uh, to where I know how much it is. Uh, when you click OK on this and you're in a trade, you will see that over here. But if you're in the trade, you can click on it and change it as you do it. So you can just click right there and it'll just keep on going. So that's uh, one good thing about it. Another thing is that I like, and I actually showed in another video, but I'm going to show it in here because this is where it needs to be. Um, let's say you're on a, let's put that on a five minutes. So it looks better. Um, what was that? Just a great run right there. I made a lot of money on that run. Um, let's say you want to duplicate this very chart. You can come up here and right click and duplicate window. 
and then you can drag it over and then you can do the same thing and you can have three charts up here so now you've got three charts that are you know pretty close to the same size and doing that makes it um to where it's easier to get those charts open as to go up here and create a new chart and create a new chart you can just right click duplicate and go now if you want all of these charts to stay ever if you change one to uh, nq and es then you want them all to stay the same then you click on that you go to red or any color you, as long as they're all the same color and by doing this this links all of these charts so if you change this one to es they all go to es if you change it to YM, they all go to YM. So by doing that, it helps. Now, if you wanted uh, a five minute, so you wanted a one minute here, this is a five minute, and say you wanted a 15 minute, then you can change it like that. But if you wanted, no matter what you do here, either the instrument or the time, you want them all to stay the same, then what you would do is go up here and you would make it a red, and then a red, and then a red. Now doing this will make them all stay the same. Now I've got another chart open that's got this on there, so it linked it, and that's why it did it. But if I go to here, and if I do a one or two minute, it makes them all two minute. So now what I would do is I would have um, different charts for different ones. So maybe you have a candle here, and you want to have a data series here, and then, um, or not data series, but a um, um, Unirenko here, and then maybe you want range over here. What, what you have to do is unlink the interval, and then you could change this data, and maybe you make this one a Unirenko, and then you could uh, make this one, and all I'm doing is right clicking the chart. Um, maybe you make this one a um, um, point and figure. So if you wanted all three of these to be different, and then, you know, so you wanted to be able to switch back and forth. So maybe you had this one a two-minute, um, you know, this one's going to be on the Unirenko, and then you've got this one over here. So you don't want the times to change. You want them to stay. But if you want to go to, like, an ES, then all three of them would change the ES using those same data series. So if you're looking at it, I mean, maybe you're not real sure what the candle pattern is doing, but you can look over here and the Unirenko looks like, you know, hey, this is going to be good. Or maybe you look at this one here um, and it shows that it's real good. So that's actually giving you three different visual looks of the same, um, the same charts as far as the same instrument. But it's letting you have a different um, visual angle of it, I guess you would say. And so that's a one good way to use it. I never use the interval. Um, I do use the instrument link a lot. And by doing that, you know, you can, like if you had all three of these had uh, NQ on the bottom, you could set up NQ tabs. And then when you click over to it, then, you know, it would um, make all, you know, you have to click all three. And then once you do that, then it would make your all your charts line up a lot easier so it wouldn't be so hard to try to click around different charts because if you want a one minute and a, fifth, a five minute and a 15 and you'd have to go up here every time you want an nq you'd have to click nq 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 this allows you to change one and it just does them all so it makes it a lot easier uh that's one good thing about the chart and i was trying to think of anything else i might have missed uh, with a chart um and these will actually work with other things that you might add, any kind of market or whichever. Um, that should be it. Um, have any questions or anything, let me know. Uh, I know that's a lot of information on these, but you know, mainly what I'm using is go to the one chart. And when I'm looking at the one chart, then you know sometimes I will switch back and forth because I like to see a, a large chart. I have four monitors, so I'm able to, you know, put some different ones at different places, but it's it makes it a lot better to be able to see different perspectives and different candlestick patterns and so forth in order to make sure that you're trading correctly. Have any questions, let me know.